Assalamu alaikum class. This is the second lecture of infectious disease epidemiology. In our last lecture, we have discussed different concepts and definitions which were involved in the infectious disease epidemiology. And today we will be discussing chain of infection, which is the main mode of transmission of infection from the uh, reservoir or the source to the susceptible host. So, moving forward, the chain of infection means how the infection gets maintained through the source or reservoir. The infectious agent stays here and then from the source or the reservoir, it gets transmitted to the susceptible host by different modes of transmission. This is the simple model which shows the chain of infection from the source or reservoir to the susceptible host through the modes of transmission, which can be different modes of transmission. But when we go into the latest model of the chain of infection, it starts with the infectious agent, which is capable of transmitting the infectious disease, which the infectious agent is present in the source or in the reservoir. We will soon differentiate that what is the difference between the source and the reservoir and source the infectious agent is only present um, and it can be transmitted from one person to another person but the infectious agent in case of reservoir is not only present but it multiplies in the reservoir so moving forward with the chain of infection when the infectious agent is, agent is present in the source or the reservoir it goes out from the reservoir uh, or the source through the portal of exit. It gets removed. Then by different modes of transmission, it gets entry into the, um, through portal of entry, it gets entered into the susceptible host. So this is the modern concept of chain of infection in which there are six components of the chain of infection which maintain the infection in the human population. But simply we can say that reservoir or source of infection through modes of transmission reaching the susceptible host maintains the chain of infection. So while discussing the chain of infection, we have three important components as we have already discussed, the source and reservoir. The source is defined as a person or an animal or an object or it can be a substance. It can be uh, anything uh, out of them and then it is capable of transmitting the, transmitting the infectious agent to the susceptible host. How will we define reservoir? Reservoir can be any person, animal, object, arthropod, plant, soil, or a substance or a combination of all of this in which the infectious agent not, is not only present but it multiplies. So the difference between the source and reservoir is the actual multiplication of the infectious agent. The multiplication only takes place in the reservoir but in the source the infectious agent remains the same and it does not multiply. In certain cases, the source and the reservoir can be same, but in certain other cases, the source and reservoir can be different. For example, in hookworm infestation, the source of infection is the soil in which the eggs of the hookworm are present, but the reservoir of infection in which actually the um, larvas harbor, they get matured, they multiply, they reproduce is the reservoir. It is the man in case of hookworm infection. But in case of tetanus infection, 
the reservoir and source are the same which are the soil in case of typhoid fever the reservoir of infection is the man and the source of infection is the urine and feces of the case which is suffering from the salmonella typhi so in some conditions in some diseases the source and reservoir can be same and in other diseases the reservoir and source are different the basic difference between source and reservoir is the multiplication of the infectious agent within the object animal plant or arthropod moving further there are two types of reservoirs the homologous reservoirs and the heterologous reservoirs the homologous reservoir means the reservoirs are of the same species um for example the principal uh, for example the principal reservoir of enteric pathogen is always a man and in case of heterologous reservoir the infection can be derived from a reservoir other than the man for example the animals and birds can also infect man and the main infectious agent is salmonella typhi which can transmit the infection and can cause multiple presentations of salmonella so we have discussed that the reservoir is a animal it's a plant it can be an object it can be human being uh, in which the infectious agent is multiplying and is capable of transmitting to the susceptible host the reservoir can further be classified into three major categories for example the reservoirs can be human reservoirs and we have discussed the cases for example of salmonella typhi polio diphtheria tetanus etc the reservoir can be animals in case of arthropod borne diseases for example rabies um for example yellow fever for example rickettsial diseases and reservoir can be non living thing for example it can be soil in case of tetanus it can be fomites in case of scabies going further into detail of these reservoirs let's first discuss the human reservoirs the human reservoirs can further be subdivided into cases and carriers the basic difference between the cases and the carriers is that cases are those human reservoirs who exhibit the sign and symptoms produced with the infectious agent but the carriers are those human reservoirs who harbor the infectious agent but do not possess the sign and symptoms but still they are capable of transmitting the infection from the susceptible uh, from the infectious host to the susceptible host it means the basic difference between cases and carriers is that the clinical sign and symptoms are present in cases but in the carriers the infectious agent is present it does not produce signs and symptoms but the infectious agent can be transmitted to the susceptible host going into further details of cases the cases can further be subdivided into different categories number 1 the clinical cases the clinical cases means the cases who exhibit the full range of clinical signs and symptoms suggestive of the disease for example these cases are present which show the clinical sign and symptoms which are evident which are suggestive that this particular disease is present for example in case of diphtheria uh, the uh, child will be coughing and they will be having um, pseudo membrane on the uh, pharyngeal region for example in case of uh, pertussis there will be persistent cough For, for example, in case of uh, COVID-19, there is dry cough. There are symptoms of the uh, loss of uh, uh, smell and loss of taste, etc. So these are the clinical cases in which the clinical signs and symptoms are evident. Another type of cases is the subclinical case. These are also known as inapparent cases. 
they are also known as covert cases they are known as missed cases they are also known as abortive cases and why these terminologies are given to all these cases because in these particular cases the uh, infectious agent is present but the sign and symptoms are not suggestive of the clinical um, signs there are uh, mild signs and sometimes the signs are not present and sometimes they can remain asymptomatic and sometimes they can show vague signs and symptoms in case of subclinical cases these are much more dangerous to maintain the um, chain of infection as compared to the clinical cases because in clinical cases the cases are identified and you can break the chain of transmission of infection by isolating them by um, putting uh, them into quarantine or by stopping the portal of entry and portal of exit but in case of subclinical cases as the sign and symptoms are not suggestive and the patients are not actually diagnosed they are more ambulatory they um they are working they do not take set leaves so they maintain a chain of transmission for a longer period of time and for a wide geographical area so their significance in transmission of infection is much more as compared to clinical cases then we have latent cases we have already discussed it that latent case is a case in which the infectious agent is present in the dormant phase in the body and whenever there are favorable circumstances it becomes active and produces signs and symptoms and the examples of latent infection can be herpes simplex sometimes um, a parasitic infection of ankylostomiasis uh, also present itself uh, in the form of latent case but uh, uh, the evidence has suggested that there are less chances but the most important example which is given in case of latent case is uh, the latent case of tuberculosis and a latent case of herpes simplex which can cause herpes zoster another term which is related to the cases is the primary case primary case means it's the single most case which gets the communicable disease it's the first case in the population which gets the disease the secondary case are those cases which get the disease from the primary case through maintaining the chain of infection how the index case are different from the primary case these are those cases which come to the attention of the healthcare service provider it is not essential that whatever primary case appears in the community is the index case sometimes the primary case is apparent is not apparent in the community he does he or she does not seek healthcare service provision so the first case which seeks and comes to the healthcare services um is labeled as an index case there is another terminology which is related to case which is known as suspect case suspect case means that we suspect on the basis of sign and symptoms of the disease that this particular person is having that disease the symptoms are connected to the suspected pathogens but they are not confirmed on laboratory uh, diagnosis so we only suspect them to have this uh, disease so we have covered the cases in human reservoirs let's move to the carriers the carriers are those who harbor the infectious agent who do not show sign and symptoms but they are capable of transmitting the infection from one person to another person the carriers can be classified in into different types the first type uh, of the carriers is known as incubatory carriers incubatory carriers are those carriers who act as carriers who can transmit the infection during the incubation period of the <coughs> infection and uh, for example there are certain diseases in which there is an incubatory period when the when the infectious agent is multiplying until it 
unless it reaches a threshold value and then it produces sign and symptoms and for that time period when the uh, the host is in the incubatory phase when the infectious agent is multiplying and it has not yet produced sign and symptoms but is still capable of transmitting the infection is known as incubatory carriers um incubatory carriers are present in measles they are present in mumps they are present in polio Uh, other examples can include pertussis, diphtheria, etc. These are important to maintain the chain of transmission of infection as they are not yet diagnosed. Convalescent carriers are those carriers which are reported in the convalescent stage of the disease when the clinical signs and symptoms are subsiding, the patient is recovering, and still uh, the signs and symptoms are now. Uh, vanished, but still in the late phase of the disease, the uh, particular person or the carrier is capable of transmitting the transmitting the infection from one person to another person. And the most famous uh, convalescent carrier, which is world uh, wide known, are the typhoid carriers, and they persist to be uh, convalescent carriers even for years. And it is uh, noted that uh, a chronic convalescent carrier um, of typhoid fever can excrete the uh, bacilli for up to uh, four to five years. Then we have healthy carriers, and the healthy carriers is a typical definition of the carriers in which there is no sign and symptom, and uh, the patient uh, has not developed the disease, but it is capable of transmitting the infection. and uh, this can be seen in case of poliomyelitis it can be seen in case of meningococcal meningitis it can be seen in case of covid-19 then the carriers are divided into uh, different categories according to duration there are temporary carriers and there are chronic carriers the temporary carriers are those carriers which transmit the infectious agent only for a shorter period of time and chronic carriers are those which uh, are capable of transmitting the infection to the susceptible host for a longer period of time as we have discussed that the chronic carriers uh, which are worldwide known are the carriers for the typhoid fever and in case of uh, temporary carriers these carriers can be uh, the carriers which uh, transmit the infection during incubatory phase and convalescent phase and healthy phase as well then we can classify the carriers according to the portal of exit sometimes the infectious agent is excreted from the body of the carriers through the urinary route and uh, um through the intestinal route and the best example of the urinary and the intestinal route are uh, the case uh, are the carriers which are typhoid carriers let me tell you that the uh, urinary carriers in case of typhoid fever are more dangerous than the intestinal carriers uh, they have more potential to transmit the infection when we compare uh, them with the intestinal carriers there are certain diseases in which the only uh, portal of exit is the intestinal route for example polio there are cases in which the portal of exit is the respiratory route for example covid-19 for example diphtheria for example pertussis so these are different types of carriers which can be present um as a case of human reservoir so let me take you back towards the uh, chain of infection the chain of infection said that it starts with the source or the reservoir the reservoir can be further of three types the human reservoirs the animal reservoirs and non living reservoirs and we have discussed in detail the human reservoirs which can further be subdivided into two categories the cases and the carriers let's move to the uh, so now your assignment is that you have to tabulate five examples of infectious diseases for each type of carriers you have to write down different types of carriers and you have to give five examples for each type of carrier in a tabulated form and you have to submit this assignment within 15 minutes of finishing the lecture so we have discussed source and reservoir uh, 
and the source and reservoir are reservoirs are of three types the human reservoir the animal reservoir and the non living reservoirs and the we have discussed that there are certain conditions in which the reservoirs are the animals for example are uh, rabies and yellow fever and influenza in which the infection gets transmitted from the animals to the human beings and then there are reservoirs which are non living things and um, which can include soil which can include beddings and fomites and etc so moving towards the second component of the chain of infection this is the mode of transmission through which the infectious agents get enters into the susceptible host and we will be discussing it in our next lecture so if you have any questions you can contact me please submit your assignment within 15 minutes of the finishing of this lecture and i am available infectious disease epidemiology is very important i will strongly recommend you to read this infectious disease epidemiology from your textbook of kpa thank you so much